Hey, what's up, y'all? I'm Bramwell Gaming, home of the gaming, and as you all are probably well aware at this point, a new update for Smash Ultimate just dropped a few days ago, adding with it a new video editor, a new sharing platform, but most importantly, the long-awaited Stage Builder. Stage Builder has been almost a staple for the Smash series ever since it was first added in Super Smash Bros. Brawl, which arguably had the best Stage Builder up to this point. So, when this feature was missing from Smash Ultimate when the game first released, a lot of people were wondering why it wasn't added, and missing the additional value that it brought to the series. But now, finally, this stage creator has made its way to Smash Ultimate, making this game now feel a lot more like the Ultimate experience. However, there are two giant questions regarding this update. Is the new version of Stage Builder actually any good? And how does it compare to the Smash Bros. Brawl Stage Builder as well as the Wii U Stage Builder? Well, my lovely viewers, today I'll be analyzing the design of this new stage builder and going over all of its components to fully answer these two questions. So, without any further ado, let's begin. First off, let's talk about the most important part of any level or stage creator being the user interface. User interfaces for level editors should not only always be easily accessible to the player, but should be well designed enough to where making stages using the editor is fun and enjoyable. If a level editor has multiple flaws in design, such as clunky placement controls, a confusing layout, etc., then players won't enjoy creating levels with it and will most likely just not use it much at all. So is making stages with this new stage builder fun and accessible, or do choices in game design make creating stages a hassle instead of the former? Well, sadly, the answer to this sort of depends on which mode you're playing the Switch with, as this level editor is much more accessible and easier to use in handheld mode than in docked mode. Even in handheld mode though, this interface is still not as user friendly as people were hoping that it would be. See, this level editor brings back the function of quote unquote drawing levels that the stage builder from Smash Wii U had. By using the touchscreen of the Switch in handheld mode, you're able to trace ground and drag objects onto the playing field for players to fight on. And you know, for the most part, drawing levels in handheld mode actually feels pretty good. You can't use a 3DS or Wii U stylus to draw, which does suck, but if you just want to scribble in some platforms to fight on and don't care about precision, then that's pretty dang easy and simple to do. However, if you do care about precision, then that's when things start to get frustrating. The camera on the level editor does not allow you to zoom in far enough to easily make precise and detailed terrain, which results in the inability to fine tune edges in your stage without messing up many, many times. There's no shave tool here either to help you with that problem, so if you want to make your stages have a lot of detail to them, you'll be fighting this editor the whole way through. This problem is even worse on docked mode, as since you can't use the touchscreen anymore, you're forced to move your cursor with the analog stick. That wouldn't be so much of an issue if the sensitivity for the cursor was so ridiculously high. You'll barely be tilting the analog stick in this editor, and the cursor will just fly across the screen at supersonic speeds. And if you're thinking that there's an option to decrease sensitivity, then you'd be wrong, as Nintendo just didn't include an option for that anywhere. I know that these things just sound like minor problems, but trust me, since they're all problems with the controls that you'll be using the most when making levels, they end up making stage building a lot more frustrating than it should be. The grid option does kind of help with this, but it would have been much more useful if you could, yet again, zoom in the camera of an editor further than you can now, since the grid is so small. The rest of the UI here, such as selecting objects, editing aspects of the objects, layout, etc., is pretty good though. Objects and gadgets in this editor are easily selectable and adjustable, since the taskbar on the left side of the screen is simplistic yet efficient. Figuring out how to modify these objects might be a struggle at first, but editing them is pretty accessible once you figure it out. Yet again though, these things are only true if you're playing in handheld mode. It really sucks that they didn't design this editor to be more compatible with docked mode, since many people prefer that playing style and more detailed graphics. I just hope that they don't repeat this level editor approach for Mario Maker 2. Alright, enough talk about the user interface though, let's talk about what the editor actually allows you as a player to do. First off, this stage builder has 12 different backgrounds in total that you can use, which is the most backgrounds that a stage builder has had up to this point. In the editor itself, you have 3 different terrain types, normal, ice, and lava, along with 11 different terrain textures that can be swapped at any time. It is noteworthy though that the aesthetic design of the terrain here, despite having more options, is much more simplistic than the custom stages of Brawl and Smash Wii U. This downgrade in detail actually kind of makes me feel like I'm playing on a 3D paint level instead of an actual detailed custom stage. But you know, that just may be me. Regardless, that's a change in design that I personally do not agree with, as it takes away a lot from the visual appeal in my opinion. After this, the only things left that the stage builder allows you to place down are the 8 special objects on the lowest selection tab on the taskbar, being cannons, springs, warp zones, bumpers, ladders, bomb blocks, explosive box, and wind areas. Only about 5 of these objects are new, as 3 of the objects here have been already used in other Smash editors. 
but I gotta say, the five new objects are pretty enjoyable to mess around with. The warp zones and wind areas in particular are definitely the best new objects and gadgets, as they mix up regular custom stages a lot and are really fun to use. The other new ones, eh, you know, I could take them or leave them, but they're nice to have as options when you need them. Although we have yet to discuss the biggest new feature about this editor, the ability to move and rotate almost every object using custom made rails. This is for sure the best change for the stage editor, as not only does it unlock so many more possibilities with stage creation, but you can control a surprising amount regarding the rails and rotation, such as the speed, angles, and more. The combinations I've already seen from so many stage creators is just outstanding, and this feature would have been even more enjoyable if the stage weight bar in the editor wasn't still a problem. See, this editor only allows you to place a certain amount of objects in terrain before it says, nope, your stage is too full. And that doesn't sound that bad, but the limit can be extremely restrictive at times, as the gadgets in particular take up way too much weight in the stages. This actually makes it really hard to make detailed and well-designed stages, for if you have a big idea for a stage, you'll be constantly running into the limit if you try and make your idea a reality. The last final big addition that Ultimate Stage Builder threw into the mix was the ability to draw terrain and place objects in the background and foreground of the stage. For the most part, this addition is also something that is extremely nice to have. Being able to draw structures in the background and have them act as aesthetics is something I really didn't expect to happen, like ever, and it's a really enjoyable feature. This is especially true since the user interface of the editor actually handles the different layers pretty well, since you can hide the foreground and background layers at any time in the editor if they get in your way. However, I highly advise you to never put anything in the foreground when making a stage. Because the camera likes to zoom in incredibly far during gameplay when there's only two people fighting, this can cause the foreground to randomly disappear and reappear, which really, really does not look good. So if you do use these new options, I would recommend only using the background layers, as they won't glitch out when playing on the stage. Now if you remember at the start of this video, I asked one simple question. Is Smash Ultimate Stage Builder actually any good? Well, after going over it in detail, I can say that it is good, but it is definitely not great. If you just want to mess around using a stage creation tool and make basic and dumb stages, then this editor is most certainly for you. However, if you want to try and make well-designed, detailed, and fun stages with this editor, just like the ones shown in the trailer, you're really going to have a frustrating time. Don't get me wrong, you can still make pretty detailed stages with this editor, but all of the minor flaws, imprecise controls, and questionable mechanics make it so that it's going to be a battle uphill instead of a smooth ride. This editor is miles better than Smash Wii U's level editor, which only had one terrain type and four objects, but I don't see it as good as Brawl Stage Editor which had around 4 or so different terrain types and I think over 20 different objects to build with. On top of this, Brawl's editor had a much more user-friendly interface, better stage aesthetics in my opinion, and was a lot easier to make the terrain and objects the exact way you wanted them. Overall though, I give the new Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Stage Builder a 7 out of 10. Well guys, that's going to do it for this video. If you enjoyed it and want to see me give my opinion on other level editors from other games, then make sure to subscribe and leave a like on this video and tell me which game's level editor you want me to cover next. And if you really enjoyed this video, make sure to click on that notification bell so that you'll be notified for every one of the future design analysis videos that I make. With all that said though, Ramble Gaming, over and out.